Welcome back busy professionals to another video. Today we will go into the action world. And I think that's something that many of you are interested. How do I get actually things done? And we will tackle three very important questions that you should ask yourself every day. When am I going to do this? What do I do now? And am I doing what I should be doing? And in order to answer these three questions, we will again look into the ICO methodology, into the output part that we tackle in the project management like a pro course. Let's go over there, pick up the magic slide from the execution beast, and let's dive in in order to answer these questions. Paperless movement, your productivity, your way. This looks a lot more complex than it actually is. What you see here is the execution beast. If you watched the previous video, there we talked about the capturing beast. This is all about personal knowledge management. How do I collect information? Where do I place it? And things like that. If you haven't seen the video and you're interested in this, make sure to check it out. I'll put a link in the description below. Here, we are now talking about the action world and we will also tackle the question about personal task management and team task management. And here you see the execution execution beast is split into two things, create and peer. And peer simply stands for plan, execute and align. And you see below already, plan answers the questions, when am I going to do this? Execute answers the question, what do I do now? And align answers the questions, am I doing what I should be doing? So let's go through this workflow step by step. In order to explain this, if you're really interested in to dive deep into this and want to apply it to your own system, well, then watch the whole course as we explain a lot more about this. But in this video, you will get the key takeaways out of this workflow that so many successful professionals are already using on a daily basis. So first, let's start with create. And here you see the output elements and output elements. It's also something that we talked about in many times in i we define generic names that you know that you use on a daily basis in a very specific way. So we have the output elements, goals, projects, work streams, operations, and tasks. And the only important thing that you need to keep in mind here is that tasks is the only entity that is actionable. That's the point where you do things. All the others are just containers holding tasks. And now you could, for example, ask, uh, what about subtasks? Well, if a task becomes too complex, then you can add additional subtasks, making the task itself a container, but the subtasks are then the only actionable items. So there's never a combination of different tasks. You always work on the bottom level and with the bottom up approach, you would create a simple task. You realize it becoming too complex. So you're creating several tasks and then you combine them in a main task or in a project goals. Again, work streams, operations, that's not the topic of this video today, but be sure if you subscribe to the channel that we will cover this in the future. Or if you want to dive into this today, make sure to join us in the Payless Movement membership and take your i journey in order to learn all the details about this. The key here is that we create any of these output elements. And let's keep things simple. We create a task that we need to do. So where do we create this task? Well, we create it in the project management system because here we are in the BPM area of the i framework, which is the business project management area. And therefore we create a task in here. We assume that was agreed with the team. It's aligned with our goals and therefore we created this task. Well, now you're sitting in a project meeting, you're getting these tasks in your project management system, and now you go back to your desk. And this is where you ask your quest, these questions. When am I going to do this? Maybe the project manager already told you to do this. Maybe you're the business owner and you say, well, let's tackle this. When, when do we do this? That's where you do the planning. And we will talk about tools in a moment. Now let's just go in a tool agnostic way through this process. So I'm planning out this task doing tomorrow, all right? So therefore, I can move this over to my task management system. Do I need to do this? No, you can obviously go to your project management system, look up your assigned tasks, and then plan them out accordingly. And this is actually happening, this planning on the weekly planning. And in this weekly planning, that's important, we just plan what we're gonna do this week. 
am I already planning for next week? Because this allows you to realize tasks that you just won't have time this week and therefore you can move them to the next week. In our case, for example, we have agenda meetings every Monday. We have one agenda meeting where we come together at the Paperless Movement and there we plan out the whole week. So everybody has already their tasks planned and they're all set to the due date on Monday. And then on Monday, there is the weekly planning happening. And therefore, in this agenda meeting, all the things, well, there's a lot more discussed there. That might be another video, but it's also part of the course, how we do these agenda meetings. But in fact, we only have this one meeting per week. We only meet on Monday. Everything is discussed, what will be done this week, during the week, and then off we go and everybody is working for themselves or asynchronously, you know, talking, but there's no reorganization unless there are some urgent things that we come into a moment here on the site here in the execution part. But we are still here in the planning mode, okay? So we plan here on a high level without saying what day we are working on this, what we want to achieve this week. What are the weekly goals? Then I go back to my desk and then I will open up my task and plan out the week. And therefore I try to have every day a daily highlight. It's one task per day that I want to complete, that I need to accomplish. And we strongly believe there's not more than three to four hours at a maximum of four hours of energy for deep work. And these daily highlights are deep work tasks. So you really have to put in effort in order to complete them. And then we have loads of shallow work and shallow work doesn't mean that it is unnecessary. It's actually essential to do that. For example, managing your email inbox, uh, getting back to requests, things like that. But those are the dangerous tasks. Those are holding you up from the big picture, moving towards your goals. That's what I was stuck in, you know, just answering, helping other people, going through the email inbox and the day is over. And at the end of the day, you ask yourself, okay, what have I done yet? And the worst is, Starting with shallow work in the morning when you have the most energy, you waste all your energy on this shallow work that you can also achieve on a low energy level. And then there's no energy left for the heavy lifting stuff, all right? So therefore, daily highlights are the tasks that need effort, that you need to have to invest time in. Usually it's always tasks that you can complete on one day, at a maximum at two days. If they need more time, then the task might be too complex to do on one day and you want to split this up in several tasks. But the beauty about this method is that when you have a daily highlight and you accomplish this, that you know that you accomplished one task a day that was moving you and or the project and therefore the business towards your goals. On autopilot, without even looking at the goals, because the goals resulted in creating these projects and tasks. So therefore, whenever you focus on the right tasks, you will automatically accomplish your goals. That's it. So now you plan out the week with your daily highlights and then therefore you work towards your weekly goals. You go through the week and therefore you have then here your daily planning, which I just mentioned that you pick up the daily highlights. And usually, again, topic for another video, in order to work on the shallow work, we are using routines. That's part of the task management like a pro course where we build up routines in order to ensure that we cover everything every day on autopilot, that we don't overwork and work through the day as effectively as possible. And now we come to the execution. Now the day starts and you come in and you know already what you need to focus on this day. So when it comes to time blocking, we don't believe to put on tasks on a calendar. It just makes no sense because in a busy work environment, things change every minute, every hour, somebody comes in, something urgent happens, and you have to move things on a calendar around if you have the tasks there. And that's something you usually don't do. So at the end of the day, all you see there is all the tasks that you haven't done on that day. Instead, on a calendar, there should be only the meetings that you have to attend. And obviously always attend meetings that are really crucial. That's again, another topic for a video. Let me know in the comments below if you should tackle the meeting culture as well. But the fact is, if I look at my calendar, I see exactly the meetings that I have to attend. So I know what's coming this day and I have the time block for my focus work in the morning. The time block is only necessary if you working in a team and people can send you invites randomly to meetings. That's where it makes sense to time block, but then time block 
three to four hours. And that's the block where you already know whenever I enter this time block, I will work on my daily highlight. That's it. And then you have your routines, the afternoon routine where you then have in there email processing, follow up uh, messages, whatever comes up in your daily work. By doing this, you ensure that you will move forward every day towards the right things, but stay also on top of all the shallow work. If there's not enough time in the day to do your shallow work, this gives you an indicator that you actually have too much work. But at the same time, you have the evidence that you've been working on the right things towards your boss or towards yourself as a boss, right? Okay, so now in the execution part, this is where, what do I do now? That's what I just said. When I sit down, I have the deep focus work, time block. I know I have to work on my daily highlight. Boom, I open up my project management system or then my planner. Let's bring in the tools now. So here we go. The tools that we use at the Paperless Movement are these three. This doesn't mean that you have to use these tools. In fact, it doesn't matter if you use, for example, TickTick or here Equiflow or things like that. The idea always works. It doesn't matter. It's not a tool making you more productive. It's the tool agnostic concepts and workflows that you use within these tools. Now let's Look at this, that's a project management system. Here for us, it's Clicker, right? The task management system is Todoist and the planner is Sansama. So ClickUp project management tasks, go into the Sansama, there's a synchronization. You can also do this manually, but here I have everything at hand and I can then plan out my day. Task management, it's not synchronized with ClickUp. I'm not moving over the task into the task management system. The task that the Todoist, actually the shallow work, that I just quickly need to note down. So when we talk about PKM, for example, Tana makes it so much easier to capture information than Heptabase, and therefore it makes sense to have two tools. Or many of you use Apple Notes as well. If you define this as a capturing application because it makes it so easy to scribble things down, then you use it. To do is can be seen as this as well, and it only holds speedies, the shallow work, so we see here speedy, speedy per definition in ICO methodology, a task that take less than 15 minutes. Everything that goes beyond are normal tasks and that need to be planned out uh, in a deep thinking session or deep work session or in, in batch working and things like that. So therefore I have this and I have in the daily planning my routine and I can tackle all my shallow work. We also have morning routines. In this morning routine there, for example, could come up organizing my shallow work. So I could already pre-order the stuff that I need to do in the afternoon in order to know exactly the moment I hit this shallow work uh, time block, I know exactly what to do. Everything is already organized. So I think that we should do another video about routines, right? Where I show more details about the routines. But here, the daily planning, and now we're in the execution level. So I'm executing the deep work that is the tasks that drive me towards the goals that are planned out during the week in my uh, Sansama scheduler planner and the execution on the afternoon where I do all the shallow work that appears, which is, uh, for example, to do is there could be also superhuman the icon for the email management and things like that. So you see the execution is based on these four factors energy level, urgent, speedy, unexpected event. So the energy level is something that I mentioned with the three to four hours or even two to three hours is more than enough because if you put in all the energy and you're in focus mode, this is where you can really perform as long as possible, three to four hours. And then that's it for the day. It's for me, on average, I would say it's for all you guys out there as well. So therefore, on the energy level, I execute it based on high energy. I do my deep work. Then you shouldn't get distracted by any people who tell you, man, I have something urgent going on. If they don't know what urgent actually means. Working in corporate, I got every day so many urgent emails, which is nonsense. If something is really urgent, this means it has a business impact in some way or form. Either business continuity is in danger that a filling line is broken, uh, your website is broken, needs to be fixed, and therefore you, they need your attention. Or if there is, for example, a very interesting client and there's an opportunity that's also affecting the business and therefore it could be something urgent that is an excuse to make you interrupt your deep work even. 
Then again, we have the speedies that I just explained. That's the short, shallow work that we need to do on a daily basis. And then unexpected events. And the beauty is about unexpected events. Whenever they come in, you can align them with whatever you have set up in the goals and with your planning. Because whenever something unexpected comes in and you are organized in the different tools, then you instantly know, is it worth moving things around? And where does it fit in? Does it align with any of the goals already? Or is it something new coming up? Is it just an opportunity? Things like that. So therefore, talking about the line, although it is here on the bottom, there is no sequential order of plan, execute, align. These things work in parallel, especially align works in parallel. So whenever I do anything, I have this align in my mind. So whenever I do something, I know if it should be done. And if there are no goals or anything, no strategy, nothing that tells you if it makes sense what you're doing right now, then you go into the busy mode. That's where people are at work keep looking busy because they are just afraid that if they're not looking busy enough or overworked, that uh, they will get called out and, you know, getting fired and things like that. If we all know our goals and we know that we do our best each day and these are the time blocks that we are working in this, if we are all aware of this, then that's the most efficient work to work together. And it makes it so easy to reorganize and replan anything that you planned with the team because everybody has the same picture, the big picture, but also their own picture, what they have to do on a daily basis. Man, this is what I planned out. These are my daily highlights. If you really want me, boss, if you really want me to do this great opportunity, shiny object that you just came across, well, then look at my planning because these are the daily highlights I needed to work on. These are the weekly goals that we agreed on on Monday. And I have to move these things around. And if this boss tells you then, man, but, uh, you know, you're working on one task a day and what are, and then you say, well, look at this. I get every day 50 emails I have to manage. I have to do these administration work, operations work and things like that. This gives you the answers to anybody, you know, trying to tell you, man, you're not doing enough because otherwise it leads to overwork working 150%. And I know what I'm talking about. I was in the situation in big corporate. I took over teams that were uh, people coming back from burnout. And we've implemented the early versions of the i principles in this team already. And now we've perfectionized the i methodology. And we know it works not only for us, it works for all of our inner circle members as well, where we help our business owners, team leaders, project managers after going through i -Core and getting the end-to-end -end understanding of the methodology. You will reduce stress. You know exactly what to do. You feel that you accomplished something in the end of the day. That's just a fact. And I hope this video was helping you to give you some inspiration on how you can tackle the week. Obviously, again, there's a lot more to this, but if you want to learn the details and you really want to nail it, then join us in the Paperless Movement membership because there the i journey awaits you where you will go course by course towards your goal of a perfect productivity system end to end. And if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel so I can catch you up in the next one. 